Hey folks, it's Stefan, back again with another episode of the Gamer's Companion to Music. This one has been a long time in the making. Today we're going to explore the vast soundtrack of Destiny. Now we're not going to be looking at the music of the Taken King, that will come in a different episode. I'm going to discuss the music in Year One, including the Dark Below and the House of Wolves expansions. The music of Destiny is absolutely wonderful, and the musical motives that run through the score are very unique to the Destiny universe. For easy navigation, check the description below if you're interested in a specific element I'll cover in this Destiny music. Now if you're done in the Tower Guardian, let's get to work. The music of Destiny was composed by a team of composers headed by Martin O'Donnell, longtime Bungie composer of the Halo series. He was joined by Michael Salvatore and C. Paul Johnson, with contributions by Beatles legend Paul McCartney. The game's development went through quite a few rough stretches, one of which saw the departure of Marty O'Donnell a short time before the game's release. I'm not going to get into these issues here, I want to focus on the music itself, but it is worth mentioning that this is a very atypical scenario in terms of a game's music and compositional team. The team is not only in charge of the music, but also the sound design of this game. The story of Destiny is a confusing one, especially playing through the game. If you haven't played it, the basic gist of the story is that you're a guardian of the last city standing on Earth. A big round sphere known as the Traveler came to Earth and using space magic granted humanity a golden age. But the Traveler's enemy known as the Darkness came and almost wiped out the race in what they call the Collapse. You are one of three types of playable guardians, a warlock, hunter, or a titan, and you are tasked to help defend humanity against a myriad of alien races all seemingly bent on destruction. Now some of the race's real intentions become known as the story unfolds, but that's the basic gist of the game. The music has many musical motives that recur a lot through the game's score in a variety of ways. Most games have a title theme that plays at the main menu screen, but Destiny is just a little bit different. The opening cutscene presents a track called The Traveler, but it acts as an overture to the game. An overture, most notably present in musical theater or operatic productions, serves as an introduction to the musical themes and motives you're about to hear in that production, and includes just the orchestra. While the story is unfolding in this first cutscene, so are a few of the primary musical motives in Destiny. I'm going to name them all different things. They aren't names you'll find in the soundtrack, but I will show you where to find them. The first I'll call the Destiny Horn Call, and this is the first bit of music you hear in this piece. This is what it sounds like. This horn call sounds pretty obviously in the French horns, and is most notably used as an indication that you finished a mission. My own favorite memory was farming the Nexus Strike, and it plays after you defeat the boss there. It's also heard in a track called The Tower, which plays while at the tower, heard here. It can also be heard in Tranquility, which is a textural piece that plays in orbit or the tower. The next motive I'll call the Destiny Tritone Melody, because of its use of the musical interval that splits the octave in half, called a tritone. Here is what it sounds like in the opening. Now I should mention that these iterations are very different in character, which makes the music in the game more cohesive. You hear the same thing in various ways and situations serving as a reminder that you're still in the Destiny world. You'll also hear this motive in a few other areas, including Cosmodrome patrols,
and in some influential cutscenes as a more developed version. The last main motive I'm going to cover here is my personal favorite. This is the choral motive that creates, in my opinion, the Destiny sound itself. I'll call it the Destiny Chorus. You end up hearing it in a few different spots, but before I analyze it, let me just play it for you from The Great Unknown, heard mostly in orbit. It is also heard in other Orbit music, and even in some Vex style battle music, but in a much more background role. Now if you listen to all this music and can't hear some of the more subtle differences in the melodies or even in the instrumentation, go back and listen to them again. I promise if you really start to focus on the smaller things in the music, your ear will start to pick them up. Structurally, this Destiny Chorus motive is really cool because it is built using two musical elements. The first is called Contrary Motion and the second is called a Scale. Let's start with the Contrary Motion. The highest chorus melody are really only singing two notes for a while, while the second part are also singing a set of two notes. Every time the first part gets higher or goes up in pitch, the second part gets lower or goes down in pitch, and this is true for the opposite way. When the top goes up, the bottom goes down. Essentially, that's just a fancy way of saying that the two melodic lines are going in opposite directions at the same interval, called contrary motion. If they were going the same way and with the same intervals, it would be called parallel motion. Hopefully the diagram here gives you a good visual of the, what the music is doing here. There's a third voice going on in the male voices here too. It's just singing a scale that moves upward and when it gets to the top, the voices just start back at the bottom and repeat it again. A scale is a series of notes ordered by ascending or descending pitch. The actual scale they use here is very non-standard, but it is a scale nonetheless. When you put these two elements together, a really interesting thing happens. The scale they use is 7 beats long, while the melody is 8 beats long. That means that the scale repeats at a faster rate than the melody, so the harmonies will change every time the melody repeats because the notes underneath the melody will be slightly different. I know it's a lot of explanation for about 30 seconds of music, but it's a really cool combination of musical elements that the composers were able to utilize to create a very unique sounding piece of music that resonates in the game world. Now I had mentioned a little bit earlier that the story involves multiple alien races seemingly bent on the destruction of humanity. While this may not be each race's actual motive, the different alien races are very different from one another and the music reflects this. The fallen are scavengers and exist in a warrior society, the strongest rise to the top. They exist on the Earth, the Moon, and Venus, but I'd say they are the primary enemy on Earth. Now the Hive are a very horrifying race full of abominations and exist on Earth and the Moon, but their home base is in this huge hole in the Moon called the Hellmouth. 
The Vex exist on Venus and Mars, but they've actually terraformed Mercury into this machine world. Oh yeah, the Vex are primarily machines controlled by Axis mines. Now, the final alien race, the Cabal, are very large beasts of war who are ruthless with, in with insane dedication to their commanders. Their base is on Mars, and you'll find them roaming every inch of that planet. The different personalities and even physical appearance actually end up warranting different music based on the activity, planet, and race you're fighting. Most of the missions on the first planet of Earth involve fighting the Fallen. I'm not sure if the music from these missions are meant to convey the feeling of the actual missions or the essence of the Fallen, but generally speaking the music is fairly generic with a lot of rhythmic gestures and includes snippets of destiny based motives throughout. This changes with the music in the House of Wolves, which includes very interesting sliding string parts to create a pretty mysterious sound. I would say, however, the most iconic piece of music that involves the Fallen is from the Devil's Lair Strike, when the player meets the High Servitor Sepix Prime for the first time. The music is driving and rhythmic, but includes a really cool repeating melody in the heavy sounding brass, while the strings are playing a very arpeggiated ostinato. Ostinatos are repeating passages in the accompaniment, and arpeggios are basically just outlining the major notes of a scale without playing the entire scale. So take a listen to the Sepix Prime music and you'll hear the essence of the Fallen. The Hive were given probably the most backstory through Destiny in that the DLC The Dark Below and even Year 2 Destiny The Taken King primarily deal with the Hive lore. We know that the Hive are built in a hierarchy, with the strength of the bottom rungs feeding directly up the chain to the top. The Hive themselves are horrifying. They live in a pit on the moon and just their physical appearance is disgusting. Their enemies will swarm you. It's a very scary feeling the first time you get swarmed by a pack of thrall. The music then is very devoid of melody. You could say that the music is based on kind of a sick texture developed in the 1930s and 40s and made famous by composer Christoph Pendereski. By creating very specific chord clusters in the stringed instruments, where each individual player of the orchestra is playing a very slightly different note, the music actually becomes quite scary. In Destiny, the violins are playing very high pitches and are sliding up and down seemingly randomly, creating what I'd call the sonic version of chaos. Just listen to it. Composers trying to push the boundaries of orchestral sound utilize this technique, and it really does fit the hive very well. If you've played the game, maybe this will give you a greater appreciation for the ways the composers and sound designers thought of the different races. The Vex, being machines, get a lot of synthesized sound. It's supposed to sound mechanical, so if I were to think of what that would mean in music, I would think of very strict rhythmic sound and non-orchestral synthesized music, and that's exactly what we get. Now I don't have much background in, ele in electronic music or sound design, but you can hear it for yourself how different this music sounds. It's a really cool set of electronic beats that drive the pace through battles and exploration in the different Vex-based strikes and missions. There is a very specific piece of music for one of the Vex missions called Eye of the Gate Lord, when you fight the Vex Gate Lord on Venus that is still very rhythmic, but orchestrally based.
The Cabal in physical appearance are the bulkiest group of enemies you'll find in Destiny. The Phalanxes have big hefty shields and you can just imagine a heavy footprint these armored troops leave behind. It's absolutely an army and the music is about as heavy as the Cabal themselves. This heavy feeling is created by a large supply of low brass and thick percussion textures. Listen to Cabal Stomp for an idea. The Cabal also get their own very distinct melodic theme that plays very often in Cabal missions and areas. Here is that melody. And here it is again in a later mission, but with a more rhythmic feeling to it. It kind of makes me think of Mars in a different way, since now I'll never think of the Red Planet without a very heavy rhythmic backbeat floating around in my brain. As you can hear, these four races have very different characteristics in terms of music. If you didn't know what any of these aliens did or looked like, you could probably make some interesting educated guesses just based on the sound and feel of the music alone. These race-specific pieces of music make up a large portion of the game's score, but that's not the only music you'll hear in the game. One of the things I very much enjoy about Destiny is that there's a good amount of downtime in between sometimes stressful missions and strikes and raids that break up the intensity of the game. These include the social spaces, the tower and the reef, and all of the time in orbit in between destinations as well as just some time spent organizing your gear and items. There are a lot. The pieces of music that play while you're at the tower or in orbit are often very textural, and while not devoid of melody, the music tends to be very relaxed or even relaxing introducing new textures and melodies that the player really becomes aware of due to the amount of downtime that can exist in the game. Here are just a few examples. Excerpt from the Hope plays in orbit and is a gorgeous piece of orchestral music that leads into the destiny choral motive explained earlier. Excerpt from the Ruin is one of my personal favorites. The piece itself is so damn whimsical, this feeling created by the rhythmic ostinato in the oboe. When this one plays in the tower, I always smile no matter how badly I got wrecked in the nightfall I just did or in the Oryx challenge mode. A very interesting piece of music that ended up changing when the House of Wolves came out is called Traveler's Promise. It's a very pretty piece of music that has a slightly somber tone to it, but it's often played in orbit and social spaces as well. I'll illustrate exactly how this piece changed in the House of Wolves section later, but this is just a little snippet of the original version. The cutscenes bring in some very specific scripted music, oftentimes in the styles of the missions they represent. Now I wasn't even going to talk about cutscenes in this video, however I do have to bring up one specific one towards the beginning of the game where you're talking with the speaker about what exactly a guardian is. I need to discuss the incredible synchronization of the music with a specific line that the speaker says. The music is an altered version of excerpt from the ecstasy as it is seen on the soundtrack of the game. The piece of music itself is beautiful and offers a lush backdrop musically for this specific scene. 
The speaker monologues about the children in the last city being frightened and telling stories and how lately the stories have stopped. Then he says a line, the darkness is coming back. And he just as he says the word darkness, the music strikes a very tense and deep chord, emphasizing that word in particular. It was clear that this iteration of the music was scored specifically for this cutscene, and I think that's pretty damn awesome. Here's the portion of the cutscene I've just described, and hopefully it adds a little something to it this time for you. Ancient enemy. There are many tales told throughout the city to frighten children. Lately, those tales have stopped. Now, the children are frightened anyway. The darkness is coming back. We will not survive it this time. Its armies surround us. The fallen are just the beginning. What can I do? You must push back the darkness. Now we move on to the Year One DLC. I was debating whether to cover this in the Taken King episode I'm planning on, but the DLC was definitely a part of Destiny's Year One. So here we go first with the Dark Below. This expansion brought forward the full wrath of Crota, who seemed like the final boss of the Hive, and at the time he was. The music in the entire soundtrack to The Dark Below can be characterized by just one note. I am not even kidding. This insanely low note becomes its own musical motive in the entire DLC. It feels like the start of every mission or strike or raid this thing plays and boy is it low and dark and horrifying. The music through the missions of the Dark Below combines the terrifying elements of the music we discussed earlier about the Hive with this repeating menacing low blast that gives a foreboding sense of danger to come. There is one really cool element to the Dark Below that involves the evolution of our knowledge of Rasputin an AI war mine used to defend Earth in the Collapse. There is one notorious mission that I personally hated with a passion, called Siege of the War Mine, where you're tasked with defending this war mine from the wizard Omnigul and her minions. During this mission though, original music doesn't play. Instead, there's an excerpt from Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony. The war mine is known in the game for quote unquote, enjoying classical and ballet music. And since the Cosmodrome is in Old Russia, they chose a Russian composer to include in the game. It's always very neat when classical music is featured in an interesting way in video games, and this is no exception. The most exciting thing about the entire Destiny soundtrack to me happened when the insanely broken Crota's End raid hit. The raid was notorious for being able to be completed in very non-intended ways, and to this day is still crazy broken. One of the key mechanics to the final fight in the raid is taking the sword from one of Crota's sword bearers and using it to defeat Crota himself, since the sword is the only way Crota can take damage. This has to do with complex issues in the lore, however, what happens when a player picks up the sword it was magical to me at first. A piece of music specific to the sword pickup fades in immediately, and it is damn epic. The music is timed exactly to when the sword runs out, so you can actually time your escape with the music. It also uses one of the motives from earlier, the Destiny Tritone motive. Take a listen to a few seconds of the rhythmic backtrack to the Crota fight leading into the awesome sword music. It is such a beautiful touch, and this dynamic scoring really adds to the experience. The House of Wolves DLC brought to light a new fallen antagonist called Skolas, a fallen Kel who escaped from the Prison of Elders and whose house betrayed the trust of Queen Marasov of the Awoken. 
The music in this DLC is pretty ominous, but I'd say the coolest and most prominent musical elements are the aforementioned slides in the high strings. I did mention that the strings slide up and down in the music for the hive, but this time the strings employ these slides in a very melodic way. Take a listen. If you are also looking for another example of the Destiny choral motive, look no further than the Shadow Thief Strike. This one is once again the melody with a very rhythmic background. I had also mentioned earlier about the different versions of Traveler's Promise, which appeared as Orbit or Tower music in Year One. Upon release of the House of Wolves, they released a new social space called The Reef. One of the tracks that plays while you're at The Reef is an updated version of Traveler's Promise, with actual voices instead of synthesized ones. Here's the difference. The first iteration, as you'll recall, sounds like this. And now here's the House of Wolves version. This is a really neat update that, if familiar, will make your head turn and go, Oh, whoa, I've heard this before, but not quite like this. Once again, the endgame produced one of the game's coolest musical moments. The music that plays during the final fight of the level 35 Prison of Elders is absolutely incredible. I had played through the Prison of Elders, and none of the rhythmic music ever stood out. And then I fought Skolas for the first time, and oh my god, the soaring horns and the epic sounds I was hearing while I was getting absolutely obliterated by the difficult Skolas mechanics made me feel so good about life. This was after they patched the burn modifier for that first time. Listen to excerpts from the Skolas fight, and tell me this isn't one of the most epic things you've ever heard, especially as the music rises in intensity and in key. Now let me tell you, this is just a portion of music from this massive score, and it only includes the music from the first year of Destiny. As a day one player, I've tried to pick music that was very specific to the various research and points I've been highlighting about the game's music, but it's just a sample serving. If I've left out your favorite piece or element of the music, I'm sorry. If I included it all, we'd most likely be here for about five hours. The Destiny fanbase is vast, passionate, and all out of love for the game, and I hope I've been able to do the music justice for you. It's had a pretty beautiful effect on my own musical development, and I've been waiting so long to share it with all of you. 
And with that, it's time to sign off for this episode of the Gamer's Companion to Music. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Like what you hear? Check out more episodes of the Gamer's Companion to Music only on the S-Vault Gaming Channel. And don't forget to subscribe!